Bitcoin's been chopping around its all-time high, but is there enough strength for this rally to continue? Well, in today's video, I'll walk you through four key metrics, covering momentum, liquidity, on-chain activity, and the macro environment, to assess whether this move still has room to run, or if it's running out of steam. No hype, just data and probabilities, so let's get into it. First up, one of the most accurate ways to gauge market momentum is by looking at the short-term holder cohort. These are holders who've held their Bitcoin for 155 days or less. They're typically the most reactive and emotional participants on the network, often buying during peak hype and selling just before the price starts to rally again. One of my favorite ways to analyze this group and smooth out short-term noise is by using the 30-day net position change. This metric shows how much Bitcoin is being accumulated or distributed on a monthly basis by short-term holders. When we look back at the two major rallies from this cycle, we can see that the short-term holder net position change spiked massively, driven by newer participants flooding into the market. And when the net position dipped sharply, it often marked points where long-term holders were carrying the network and doing the majority of the accumulating. Right now, around 80,000 Bitcoin are being accumulated on a rolling monthly basis by short-term holders. To put that into context, during those prior rallies from this cycle, that number was over 800,000, more than 10 times higher. It's fascinating to see this divergence. Despite a significant breakout to new all-time highs, short-term holders haven't been piling in like they usually do when the market reaches short-term overextended levels. To me, this suggests there's still room for this local rally to run, but let's take a look through a different lens. What we've got here is the stablecoin supply ratio, a popular metric that helps us measure speculative demand by comparing Bitcoin's price action to the liquidity of stablecoins. It calculates a z-score of Bitcoin's price relative to an aggregated basket of stablecoin liquidity over a 200 period window then normalizes that ratio to measure how far it deviates from its long-term mean. Put simply, it shows whether Bitcoin's price is high or low in relation to the amount of capital sitting on the sidelines in stablecoins. When the stablecoin supply ratio is high, represented in green, it means Bitcoin's price is elevated relative to available stablecoin liquidity. That typically signals that speculative demand is outpacing available capital and it's something we often see near market tops when upside potential is running dry. On the flip side, when the ratio is low, shown in red, it indicates there's abundant sideline capital, suggesting potentially undervalued conditions on a local scale. These are often the moments you see local market bottoms or accumulation phases forming. And right now, we're only just nudging into the green zone. Compared to the rest of this cycle, it's actually very subdued, especially considering we're trading around the all-time high. Now, let's put on our technical analysis hat and look at what price action alone is telling us. Specifically, let's focus on 30-day price momentum as a percentage. This shows how much Bitcoin's raw price has moved over the past month and helps us identify both the strength and direction of recent trends. When values are high, shown in lighter blue, it means Bitcoin has gained strongly over the last 30 days and signals extremely bullish momentum. When it comes to smarter investing, it often pays to be a contrarian, especially when momentum starts accelerating rapidly. For Bitcoin, it's worth watching closely when price increases outpace recent averages. A particular level to note is when Bitcoin's 30-day momentum reaches the 30% mark. This level of momentum hasn't been sustainable this cycle, and quite often results in a local pullback. And historically, when the 30-day momentum exceeds 40%, a pullback becomes almost inevitable. So why do I still think there's more room to run? Well, despite climbing toward new all-time highs, we've barely broken above the 10% mark on this metric. That's a big contrast to earlier cycle moves and suggests we haven't yet reached that overheated zone where the probabilities really lean towards being short-term bearish. This doesn't mean a pullback can't happen at this level. In fact, we've seen plenty of chop and local pullbacks during this cycle and it should be expected throughout any rally. What I'm saying is that despite Bitcoin trading at such elevated price levels, the actual momentum behind the move isn't flashing any major warning signs yet. 
it's really interesting to compare what the data says versus what your gut might be telling you. In this case, the data painted a lot more of a measured, optimistic picture than what my gut was telling me about this rally. Now finally, I want to show you a completely different indicator, one I built after watching a brilliant video from Bravo's crypto research. That video featured a model that estimates Bitcoin's fair value by comparing its six-month return to a weighted blend of macroeconomic inputs. Specifically, it uses a combination of the equities market and the dollar index. The white line in the chart represents a normalized six-month return of those two macro indicators using custom coefficients. The orange line is Bitcoin's actual six-month return, plotted alongside for comparison. Now what's interesting is when we overlay a red and green histogram to show how Bitcoin is performing relative to where it should be based on its macro correlations. When Bitcoin outperforms this fair value model, the histogram turns red, signaling an overheated environment. When it underperforms, it turns green and highlights periods of relative undervaluation. By removing the lines and just focusing on the histogram colors, the model becomes a powerful visual tool and has been surprisingly effective at identifying when price is tracking macro conditions or when it's deviating from them. Historically, big red spikes have been followed by cooldowns, while large green spikes often acted as a base for another rally, provided the macro backdrop was supportive. And when we look at the macro environment right now, it's hard not to be bullish on risk assets for the rest of the year. So with this current green histogram print, I'm feeling pretty optimistic about the next six months. But with that said, you've still got to stay flexible in this market. Just because the indicators are leaning bullish doesn't mean Bitcoin is going to follow the script to the letter. One of the biggest lessons the Bitcoin market teaches you over time is to always expect the unexpected. But if you're looking to tactically position yourself, the key is to trust the data and act when the probabilities are leaning in your favor. You're never going to win every time, but being right more often than not in a market as volatile as Bitcoin is already a serious edge. So, to wrap things up, the data right now suggests this rally isn't running on fumes just yet. Even though we've seen Bitcoin chopping around its all-time high, short-term holders haven't aggressively bought into this move. And that's actually a good thing. When a rally becomes overcrowded too quickly, it usually burns out fast. But the hesitation we're seeing here implies there's still dry powder left, and potentially more fuel for a continued leg higher. Stablecoin liquidity is another piece of the puzzle that supports this. The stablecoin supply ratio is only just starting to rise into positive territory, which means there's still a lot of capital sitting on the sidelines that hasn't flowed into Bitcoin yet. That kind of liquidity backdrop, especially in combination with strong price structure, often gives a rally the legs it needs to keep going. And finally, if you take a step back and look through a macro lens, the picture remains encouraging. The fair value model I've derived from Bravo's research that combines equities, the dollar index, and Bitcoin is showing we're still trading below where the market could be, all else equal. Historically, these green prints on this fair value model have marked periods of relative undervaluation given the macro backdrop. It's certainly not perfect, but it looks to me that the probabilities are tilted in the bull's favor. Now, that shouldn't mean you throw caution to the wind, but it does mean that for now, the data continues to support the idea that this bull cycle has more room to run. As, As we approach what appears to be the latter part of the cycle, remember, the smartest edge comes from staying evidence-based and letting the data lead you. I'll catch you all in the next one. If you're serious about Bitcoin analysis, my full custom indicator suite is now live, built for investors looking to gain an edge through deep cycle signals and advanced on-chain insights. It's available now through the link in the description, where you'll also find my free newsletter. And if you found this valuable, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. And I'll see you all in the next one.